Hey, welcome back to the lecture. So in this lecture, uh, let's understand how a multiple nodes can access the bus and how the bus access actually serialized. And uh, we are going to understand some uh, animation uh, in order to understand. So how actually a node wins the arbitration. The CAN communication protocol is a carrier sense multiple access protocol with collision detection and arbitration on message priority AMP that stands for arbitration on message priority. CSMA means that each node on a bus must wait for a prescribed period of inactivity before attempting to send a message. And how that inactivity is sensed you already know because of the continuous recessive states and the IFS isn't it that is interframe spacing. Now CD plus AMP that is arbitration on message priority means that collisions are resolved through the bitwise arbitration based on a pre-programmed priority of each message in the identifier field of a message. The higher priority identifier always wins the bus access. Now let's understand the bitwise arbitration in CAN. Okay, so I'm going to take you through this animation to understand the bitwise bus arbitration. Now let's start. Okay, so let's understand the CAN bitwise bus arbitration between uh, nodes. Now let's consider three nodes here, node one, node two, and node three. And these are the arbitration IDs of node one, two, and three. Now arbitration ID means it's a 11 bit identifier, isn't it? So if you just take a look into these numbers, uh, so which one among these numbers is the lowest one? So here you can see that 659 is the lowest one, isn't it? So that means node three is going to win this arbitration when these three nodes compete for a bus at the same time. Okay, so remember, so lower the arbitration ID number, higher is the priority, right? So now let's see how that happens. Now let's understand with this animation. Okay, so here on the left hand side, you are seeing node one, node two, node three, all are trying to send a message at the same time. And here at the bottom is the bus state, okay, the resultant bus state, can H and can low. And here is the identifier field. So identifier field, as I said, is a collection of 11 bit identifier and the RTR bit. Now, as I said, every frame starts with dominant bit that is SOF. So all these three nodes, they find that the bus is idle and they try to send message. So they first put the SOF bit, isn't it? So that's a dominant bit. Okay, so after that, they all put the first bit of the arbitration ID, the first MSB, okay, the most significant bit. So in this case, this happens to be 111 in all uh, cases, in all three nodes, isn't it? So after that, so the bus state in this case becomes recessive because all three nodes have put the recessive bit, isn't it? Now after that, again 111, okay, so that means bus state will be at recessive state and after that they will put after that they are going to put 0 0 0 that's a dominant state so the bus state becomes dominant now after that and after that they all put 0 0 0 okay and uh, that is actually dominant again and after that they all put recessive bit okay and in this case bus state becomes recessive and after that so here is a difference so here the id changes for node 2 okay so closely observe here node 2 loses arbitration here because it is trying to put the recessive bit okay but node 1 and node 3 are putting dominant bit so that's why node 2 goes out of arbitration. So because the bus state has become dominant, so the node 2 has put recessive, but it hears back dominant. 
remember in CAN transceiver what happens? So this is the design of the CAN transceiver, isn't it? So whatever a node puts on the bus, it also hears it back. So, so node 2 actually put the recessive state. So recessive state means the potential difference between CAN H and CAN low is zero, but it hears back the potential difference of two and it understands that it lost the arbitration. So that's why it will just go to the listen only mode. Okay. So it will just sit there and listens. It will not try to compete with node one and node three now. Now the arbitration continues between node one and node three now. So next both actually put the recessive state. So the bus state becomes recessive. And after that, again, they put the recessive bits. So the bus state becomes recessive. And after that, here, you can see that node one is trying to put the recessive bit, but node three put the dominant bit. So hence, node three wins the arbitration here and node one loses the arbitration. So hence, the winner is node three, okay? So node one actually goes to listen only mode, okay? And after that, there are no more devices. So node three continues and it then puts its remaining bits of the identifier field and finally the RTR and after that it sends the data. That's how the arbitration happens and that's how a node which has the lowest identifier value wins the bus arbitration. That's how the bitwise arbitration works. So remember that lower the binary uh, message identifier number that is lower the identifier number the higher is its priority so that also means that an identifier consisting entirely of zeros is the highest priority message on a network because it holds the bus dominant the longest isn't it and uh, also remember that a dominant bit always overrides a recessive bit on a can bus so that is the reason why node 3 won the arbitration here okay so because it actually overwritten all the other recessive states produced by other nodes isn't it great so and the allocation of message priority is up to you up to the application writer okay and remember that all this arbitration will happen automatically by the controller itself. So you need not to do anything. You just have to allocate the priority values. That's it. I mean the identifier values. That's it for different messages. Okay. So and from the next lecture, let's get started with some programming. So let's use our CAN peripheral of the STM32 microcontroller to do some applications on CAN. Okay. Great. So I'll see you in the next lecture.